Hello, uh, good evening. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, in the previous class, we were understanding uh, how to work with CSV files in Python. Uh, to work with CSV files in Python, you have to import a module called as CSV. Uh, and, yeah, and opening the CSV file is uh, just like normal as opening the ordinary text file that we understood uh, in the previous sessions we use the same system call to open uh, the csv files as well and then uh, while reading this csv, CSV file uh, you have to use uh, the reader function uh, which is invoked on the csv module and pass uh, the handler that you get uh, as the return value from the open okay it opens and then you can iterate and you can go for uh, displaying every row of uh, the uh, CSV file in the form of a list okay. and uh, things to note is uh, in case if uh, a row is empty in CSV file it will be uh, displayed as an empty list and in case if a column is empty it will be uh, displayed as an empty string in uh, when you are uh, trying to read from the CSV and print so th those are the two things uh, which you should uh, note a blank line in the csv file shows up as an empty list and similarly an empty column in the csv file uh, will be showed up as an empty string in the list those are, these are the two uh, uh, things which you got to remember and then uh, we have i have a working example here so import uh, the csv module and then opening uh, the file uh, data2.csv in the read mode um, and the handler i'm getting it to my file now these are the uh, two comments lines don't look into this so what i'm doing i'm opening uh, my file in uh, sorry re trying to read from the csv file by uh, passing it as an argument to the reader method of csv module and then print row so every row it will read and then it will go for uh, printing so if you want to execute this so we'll uh, go for executing I'll increase the font size a bit. So it has increased now. Okay. Now what I'll do, I'll copy this program. I'll try to execute it as uh, uh, from the 
uh, interactive python so i'll take a file is required csv file is required for this i'll open new file i'll write all com comma separated values one comma okay one row and similarly i go for writing the second row two comma a b c comma some x y z and then three comma p q r comma m n o so three uh, lines have written this is a and i have to save it as a dot csv file so all files i take this is i'll take data dot csv so it was already there i'll just say overwrite it okay now if i so run this okay so the file name is data2 so i have to change it to data dot csv so data dot csv in the read mode now it is reading see uh, every row of my text file uh, sorry csv file is read in the form of uh, a list okay now in case if i have a blank row so then it will be i think uh, the font size is too much I'll, I'll reduce it so i think 12 is okay okay this is okay now again if i run okay say data it is not data to data so now the blank line is displayed as uh, an empty list and similarly the blank column say 4 comma and i don't give anything and then something okay will be displayed as an empty string Okay. it is displayed as an empty string okay. like this you can go for uh, reading from the csv file and you can go for doing any kind of processing so next uh, csv writer uh, how to write to the csv file so for that purpose we make use of uh, the method called as write row and it takes a list of string to be written as a row okay how to do this uh, and while using this write uh, row method you can also go for uh, specifying the dialect so so normally uh, when you're writing to the csv file the dialect what we choose is excel dialect okay so this is again uh, the module uh, csv is imported i'm opening data dot uh, data one dot csv in the write mode and so now the writer object which i'm creating wr is with the dialect excel okay because um, uh, it looks even you can go for opening the csv file in uh, the microsoft excel also okay and then wr dot write row see so all comma separated values which are specified in the form of a list okay and similarly the other row and one more row so three rows uh, we are writing like this okay so we'll uh, quickly execute this and uh, see this so it is uh, uh, necessary for you to specify the dialect as excel if you do this even this file you can also go for opening it in uh, the excel microsoft excel okay now data one dot csv i don't go for creating it because uh, when you're opening in the right mode if the file doesn't exist the file will be created okay now i'll just go for running so the file is created and all this 
things is written to the file okay i'll just go for opening it so I'll, all files i'll tell select data1.csv this is the one see uh, it's showing data1 is uh, can also be opened in uh, the excel sheet open okay this is what uh, the content that is written to the file data one dot csv next so another uh, example now see by default uh, what this program was doing is so if you look into this output after every line there is an empty row appended after every line there is an empty empty row appended now this uh, you can avoid if you use this so open the same file in the right mode now dialect also i have specified it as okay not in this sorry so dialect also specified it as excel but new line i am giving it as blank because i don't want the traditional new line uh, which was added after every uh, row that was uh, written into the uh, csv file okay so new line is equal to blank so by default after every row it's going to insert a new line if you want to avoid that so then you can go for using this now if i use this program if i go for executing this okay this one i have to change this this characters i need to change so opening double quote and closing double quote and this one also and the rest all is fine okay. now data 2.csv file is created now if i open that so this blank lines which you are seeing you know, it should not be there so data 2 see the blank line is not there okay in data 1 there was a blank line inserted in data 2 csv so the blank line after every line the every row that is written is not there if you want to prevent it so this is what you got to use okay a new line is equal to a blank nothing hope people are following Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Now, yeah, try to do this. Program to read name, gender, and email, and write to write it to the CSV file as a row. Start doing it. You have to read the name, gender, email, and then write these things to the comma separated values file. So easy one, you can see here. Import the module CSV. I'm getting the name, reading the gender from the keyboard, email ID also I'm reading. Again, opening the file data2.csv in what mode? append mode okay so uh, say for example i read the two uh, student information right now and i want to close uh, the program and tomorrow i want to uh, read two more your uh, students information then tomorrow what i'm entering current what i'll be entering those data should get appended to the existing data so hence i'm not wrote, if i open it in the right mode every time i'm opening running the program and reading subject information and writing to the csv file it will go for overwriting now i don't want that to happen so i'm opening the file in the append mode and even i don't want the blank lines also to be inserted after every row that is written so hence i'm making new line is equal to this and as usual uh, mm, when i'm creating the writer object you know i'm uh, creating it with the dialect excel and then write row so these are the things name gender and email i have specified uh, the list of uh, student information that should be written to the csv file okay then now uh, quickly executing this program
so I'm running this program now so to uh, which file I'm writing uh, appending it to data2.csv data2.csv is already here with some information so this data is already there name and then gender and some information is already present there now I want to append additional student information to the same file so I'm running this program now now it is asking me to input the name and then gender and then email abc at gmail.com now it is written now what I have to do is I have to close this and open this file again okay. I'll go for opening it see this is excuse me so this is the line that is written okay appended got appended to the existing content next so different delimiter so till now uh, commas uh, excuse me so till now uh, we uh, used comma as the delimiter between uh, the different values so I don't want to use comma as the delimiter because I don't like comma so then I have to use a different delimiter how to do that so that is also uh, possible see uh, import CSV and then this is the CSV file which I'm opening in the read mode now CSV dot reader so delimiter I have specified it as uh, the pipe symbol or uh, the bitwise oring operator okay uh, for every row in reader so e in row okay, you know, it gets printed that means uh, all values here they are separated by uh, this uh, bitwise oring operator and we don't have comma as the delimiter so even you can go for uh, choosing any of uh, the delimit desired delimiter what you want so now uh, to run this program I have to create a file uh, which has just symbol as the delimiter will quickly do that so I'll use the same uh, data2.csv itself data2.csv itself data2.csv and all these commas uh, which are the delimiter now I'll change them to this symbol so I'm using these things as the delimiter Here also I'll change. Okay, now I'll save this. Now if I run this program now, okay, the I should have this. Okay, closing inverted comma. Control C. Sorry, it's already there. Unexpected indentation where reader. Okay. okay this is not necessary okay and then this is also like this one tab and I want this printer to be uh, inside this for loop okay now it is done you can see now now I am printing each value okay, you know, and how it is taking each of them value by using uh, this as the delimiter character okay so in case if I change the delimiter character to some other character I'll change instead of this bitwise ordering operator let me change it to this modulus operator now this delimiter is not there in the uh, file so now it should not fetch you anything okay this is taking away everything okay so as it is it is printing because since there is no delimiter 
so the entire thing is taken as one value and it is printed for you and here so using this as the delimiter it, uh, it has taken every value which is separated by this delimiter okay people understood hello yes sir okay now uh, registering uh, the dialect okay now say for example uh, import csv now i want to uh, register a different uh, dialect so csv dot register dialect now i should say uh, when i'm writing to the file i want to use uh, instead of comma a different delimiter say something like this uh, as symbol i need to use okay now this is what i'm registering uh, there is a method called as register dialect using this register dialect you can also go for registering the required delimiter uh, while writing to the csv file okay opening item 3.csv in the write mode and then here uh, when you are creating the writer object you want to specify the dialect as ashes see this is the name which was specified while registering this as the delimiter using register dialect and then these are all the things what i am writing now now all these things they will be written uh, by using uh, uh, not uh, comma is uh, the comma is not the delimiter used here now what it will use is it is going to use uh, the hash symbol as the uh, delimiter like this you can go for registering any uh, uh, symbol as uh, the uh, delimiter okay um, and and this is the method what you have to use register dialect so let us uh, go for executing this Class is there, sir. Class is there, sir. 4 to 5 class and there, class is there. I am just reframing it. Okay. Now if I run it, okay, so with open, okay, with W I've written, okay, capital letter. To make it a small. expected in that yeah this all this should come inside uh, the width sorry so all this statement should uh, from here they should be uh, under the scope of the width i hope all of you are uh, seeing what i'm doing yes sir okay So all these statements should be under the scope of uh, the width. Okay, now return. See, all uh, these things is written to the file items 3.csv. Now if I open items 3.csv, which is here, I'm opening. See, now pens and then uh, it is not the comma comma is not the delimiter here it is the ash symbol okay and uh, so there is a blank line after every line that is written to the csv file if you just want to avoid this uh, here I, I, I got to write new line is equal to nothing So new line is equal to nothing. Now return this file if I close it and open again. Items 3.csv. See they are written without the blank lines after every row that is inserted.
Okay. Sir, you are class. What are you doing, sir? Next. So, next uh, is uh, the OS module. Uh, till now, you understood uh, the CSV module. Uh, how to use uh, uh, the CSV module to work with the CSV files. Next is the OS module. Okay. Uh, so, when you are writing uh, the paths, so you have to use uh, the slashes okay either the forward slash or uh, the backward slash so in the windows operating system we use the backslash and in the linux uh, operating system we use the forward slash when we are writing the path names in order to identify each file uniquely so now uh, if i want to write a general program which works fine on windows operating system also and on the linux operating system also it is it it will be very difficult because the windows operating system asks for the backslashes and the linux operating system asks for the forward slashes when you are writing the path names of the files but this fortunately we have uh, a method called as uh, path.join using which you can go for uh, uh, seamlessly writing the path names even in the windows operating system also and the linux operating system also so when you use this method okay so the operating system will automatically choose the required uh, slashes uh, for uh, the path names so backslash or the forward slashes so again uh, to use this you got to import uh, the method called as uh, os import the os mod module sorry not the method os module and then this is say for example i want to build a path of user bin and spam in any of the operating system either in the windows or on the linux operating system if i just pass them as arguments you know to this uh, method so on windows operating system it will take uh, automatically the backslashes so all these things will be separated by the backslashes if i'm executing the same program on the linux operating system so it will be taking it the uh, forward slashes okay so this is uh, how we do it so we to execute this i am running this now See, now uh, it has used the backslashes on the Windows operating system. Uh, you might ask, why two slashes here? So always, uh, uh, to when you are giving the path name, you know, uh, a backslash should be escaped by the another backslash. Okay, this. So this, this is the escaping backslash for this backslash. Okay, so now this is the path now. Hope you people understood. Now if I run the same... Uh, thing on the linux operating system instead of the backslash it will take the forward slash is that clear hello okay now this is the method path dot join okay next so this is what uh, uh, this is how you get it this is what the output we got it and why two slashes because so double slashes are there uh, the one slash is needed for escaping the another uh, backslash character next is so creating string of uh, string for file names say so i have the list of file names here so my files accounts.txt is one file details.csv is another file invite.docs is one more file okay now i want to create the path names for all of them now what i do again print i am making use of the same function os.path.join okay so on the join function i am passing the path name okay so c so double slashes i am writing because this uh, the windows operating system 
So I have written it as the backslashes, two backslashes and the file name, I want the file name to be at appended to this path. So it also does uh, the joining operations when you uh, do like this. Okay. This is one path and this is the other one. Okay. Uh, if you just observe now, for every file name which is in the list my files, so the file name is taken and it is appended to this path. Okay. Uh, if I execute this, See now, so to this base path, so we have the file name appended. Okay, and when uh, the path is resolved, see oh, on one slash, the slash which was backslash which was used to escape the other backslash is removed. Okay, and this is what the actual path is. Next, current working directory. You know, current working directory or uh, the present working directory. How to display the current working directory? So again, it is possible by importing the OS module, and uh, there is a method called as get CWD, get current working directory. So this will tell you the present working directory. So even I don't know what is my present working directory is. So if I just run this, okay, importing uh, the module OS, and if I just uh, go for executing get CWD method, it will tell me what is my present working directory. I will do that. Import OS and now I write OS dot get CWD current working directory. So my current working directory is this. So C drive users under that I have uh, uh, my own folder with the name Arish PT and all the programs what I'm doing and all the text files what I'm creating so they're right now stored under this directory so this is my present working directory again so os module has many beautiful methods using which you can uh, work with the directories okay so directories and the complete path name subdirectories many things lot more you can do okay and then say uh, this is my present working directory right now so uh, not this uh, python 3 4 is not my present working directory so my present working directory is this now in case if i want to change my present working directory now uh, what we do uh, normal uh, if you're working at the das prompt command prompt you will use the command cd change directory command to do uh, the to in order to change the directory now similarly uh, here you have a method within the module os module called a chdir change directory and you just path the path name where you got to change it changes the directory okay uh, i'll just uh, go executing this so os dot chdir now i'll give the path name c colon double slash usr okay now i want to change the directory to this from Arish BT to only users. I'll close it okay, and enter. Oh, users. Sorry, it is not only user. It is users. I, I want to change it to users. It's saying that directory is not found. See now, my present work king directory is changed from a rich pt to users and again if i go for executing this what is my present working directory or current working directory it says my current working directory is users okay and similarly in case if you uh, specify the wrong directory or the directory which doesn't exist as argument to the change directory then it ends up with the runtime error okay and all these kind of runtime errors can be easily handled by using try and accept block. Now, absolute versus uh, relative paths. Okay. Uh, 
there are uh, two ways using which you can specify the paths one is the absolute path the absolute path is the path which always starts from the root correct so which it starts from the root and then all its subdirectories we specify and finally uh, the uh, uh, file which is present inside inside your present working directory if i go with the relative path names all relative path names goes uh, with respect to the current working directory from the directory uh, where you are working okay uh, uh, the path names which are framed with respect to your current working directory or uh, the relative path names and uh, the paths which are uh, starting all the way from the root till the leaf we call it as an absolute path and relative path names most of the times we form them by using uh, two special uh, characters called as dot and double dot so dot represents the current working directory and double dot represents the parent uh, directory uh, op people know these concepts hello yes yes sir okay thank you and this is the example for it so these are all the relative path names so the path names are uh, written by using dot and double dot okay so dot is the parent directory and sorry double dot is the parent directory and single dot is the current working directory okay and these are all the absolute path names because they are starting from the root so what does a root mean here the root means the drive letter so i'm starting from the d drive and all its subdirectories till uh, the file next so uh, till now uh, you understood uh, how to write your own program in python uh, for uh, uh, a general program in python which works uh, very well in windows operating system also and uh, the linux operating system also with respect to the path okay uh, because there is difference uh, windows takes the backslashes uh, in the path names and uh, linux takes the forward slashes in the path name but this uh, can be easily handled by using a path dot join method and then you understood how to create the string for the file names and then how to know your current working directory and how to change the directory to the desired uh, uh, directory and then what are absolute path names and relative path names now time to understand how to create a new folder how to make a new folder uh, within the python program okay so again uh, the os module is required so within this os module there is another beautiful function or the method called as make dirs so it just not creates one directory so uh, waffles it creates all the say for example delicious is not present inside the c drive it will go for creating the directory delicious and say walnut so if this itself is not there delicious itself is not there what does it mean so none of these directories are there so it creates the delicious and then it creates the walnut and then it creates the waffle so so the walnut will be the subdirectory under delicious and waffles will be the subdirectory under under walnut so something like this say for example uh, i'm making a call something like this delicious is already present walnut is also present and only waffles is not there only this gets created okay so this is uh, the simple thing so so so, so simple to create the directories within your program so if you uh, want to automate something you know the directory creation and copying some files from one directory to the another directory so you can much easily do uh, here in python okay so we'll go for executing this i think my c drive uh, it does if it is right protected it will not allow uh, me to write so otherwise it should allow i think it will allow or otherwise uh, instead of for d drive let me take it as c drive let me take it as d drive itself okay so it has created now in my d drive i was not having uh, a directory or a folder with the name delicious walnut and waffles now all these things should be created 
so if i open d try there should be a delicious directory under that the valnet under that the baffles so we'll just have a look into that i'll go to my d try I'm in my D drive. So delicious D it is. See the a folder with the name delicious is created. So under delicious walnut is created. See the date of creation also. 24/11. This is uh, DD. This is MM. 24/11 it is created. And what is the time? 4:51. Now inside inside Valnet we have the Waffles folder also created. So so easily uh, you can do it. Now back to the PPT. Okay, handling uh, the absolute and relative paths. Okay, there are uh, other methods also. See uh, in OS uh, path join method you understood. Now along with uh, path that join there are other methods also path that absolute path abs path absolute path and you pass some path name what this will do is this is going to return a string of the absolute path of the argument so this is an easy way to convert a relative path name into the absolute one say relative path names always starts with respect to the current working directory or the present working directory when you pass this current working directory or present working directory as argument to the path uh, uh, absolute path as argument it will give you an absolute path all the way from its root and similarly so there is another method is absolute okay so if you want to check whether the path is an absolute path name or a relative path name you can go for using this what this method returns is it's going to return you true if the path is absolute path which is starting from uh, the uh, root so if the path is a relative path it returns you the false okay and then there is another method relative path so this is path and start now what this relative path method returns is it returns a string of a relative path from the start part to the path so you got to specify from where to start from there it's going to return you the relative path to this path okay so this is another uh, method now all this uh, methods you can use in order to easily handle the absolute and the relative path names in python so we have the examples also here see what i'm doing here now for absolute path I'm passing the relative path name as argument that is dot which is the present working directory when I pass this now what it is giving me is so my my present working directory is this python 34 but this is giving me all the way from the root that is what is an absolute path and similarly uh, when I pass this uh, which is a relative path now to this relative path, I am again getting the absolute path completely. This is another one. This is another relative path. From in the present working directory, I have a folder, subfolder with the name scripts. Okay. So this is the present from present under present working directory. There is a folder with the name scripts. And to my present working directory is just Python 34. Under that there is a script. Again, what is the absolute path for this? So all the way from the root. And then I'm checking whether dot is an absolute path. It is giving me false. Now, so OS dot path is absolute. To this, I'm passing the absolute path of dot. What is absolute path of dot? It is this C drive Python with 34, which is an absolute path. Now it is returning me true. Okay. Now uh, don't, don't go with this. So this is the relative path which I'm passing as argument to absolute path. But what absolute path gives me now? It gives me, sorry, uh, this absolute path method gives me the absolute path for this relative path. And this is absolute method is going to return you the Boolean value true. Okay. And similarly, 
relative path see this is the path and this is the start okay so leaving this start so what it is giving you is this this is the relative path okay now all these things can be executed okay we'll go for executing each one of them see now so i have set my current working directory to use it okay now i want to change my directory uh, i have to make it back to arish bt i'll change my directory to user slash now i call my present working directory is this arish bt okay now if i go for running this and my present working directory it gives me the complete path or the absolute path next so how do we extract uh, the base name okay see now so this is what the base name is and this is what the directory name is or the path name okay so i, I need to separate so I, I need to get only the base name or the file name okay what is that you can do you can go for using uh, the method base name invoke the execution of base name by passing the path as argument to it so then you can get the base name of the file okay. here this is what the path that is passed now and what it is returning you is exe and similarly if i want the directory name this part so then again pass it as an argument to directory name so it skips this base name and what it gives you is the directory name complete directory name I'll start with the path. Now I'll change it to my current directory users. Then Harish Pt. Instead of this, because I don't have this file, I'll take the file which is available with me. So data two dot csv. Okay. So I am defining uh, the variable path with this string. Now I go for extracting the base name of this path. Okay. Now it should print me data two data two dot csv. So data two dot csv. Similarly, if I invoke the execution of base name method by passing the path name, so invoke the execution of directory name method by passing the same path dir name, it it gives me this portion of the path. See this? Hope you understood. So next, uh, if you want to split also, you can go for uh, splitting. Say so this is uh, the path name now. I need to split uh, the directory name and the base name separate. Okay, so that is also possible by using uh, the split method. Now on this path, I'll invoke the execution of os dot path dot split, and I pass path. So you can see now, this is the directory name, and this is the base path. So base name. Okay, they are split, and this is a tuple with two strings. So this is the directory name string, 
and this is the uh, base uh, name string it what it returns is a tuple okay tuple with two strings so next finding file size and uh, folder contents okay. so again this path has one more method called as get size uh, i don't know whether you people remember or not when we were doing the file programs so just to count the size of the file to find the uh, size of the file what we were doing we were reading uh, the content of the file and then we were uh, executing the length we were invoking the execution of length method on the content of the file and then we were trying to find the size of the file now that is not necessary you can directly go for passing the file path name as argument to get size method okay which is there inside the os module and it will give you uh, the size of the file in terms of bytes okay now we'll do this os dot path dot get size i'll pass data to dot csv as the path name or i'll give the path name complete path name say 136 bytes this is the size of the file data to dot csv and similarly you can also go for listing uh, the contents of the directory or uh, the folder okay now list dir is the method and uh, remember this uh, for uh, calling this method list dir path is not necessary so directly on uh, the os module you can go for invoking the list dir os dot list dir I'll give some directly name. So let me give this itself, RHPT. Because this is so many files which I've created till now. See, these are all the files. So, so many files are there. And it is written in the form of a list. Okay. List of files. What is returned is the list of files and you can go for uh, using the concept of indexing and access any of this file. Okay, next is uh, checking the path validity. Okay, we'll uh, stop here and path validity and this uh, few more things are there. Uh, we will discuss it in the next class. A any doubts still here? Hello? Any doubts?